Al Atmansky, and I was commanded here by Paul Bourne. And anytime Paul says come, <clears throat> I jump to attention and, uh, and show up. It's my second time here. Uh, I like this gathering because it's based in a place. It's based in a park. Uh, the majority of people who attend are from the neighborhood, from the municipality, from the region. Uh, although people come from other places, it's a special kind of event because it feels more authentic and real in that you're in the midst of people who live in the community and region and area where you are. Well, I think the Spirit Canoe, first of all, is a, is a nice image for the work that we all have to do. Uh, it's a Canadian image, it's a Canadian icon. Spirit Canoe, uh, one version of it at least, is the Jade Canoe, which is on the back of the old $20 bills. It was uh, sculpted by Bill Reed. Uh, this Jade Canoe sits in many locations. Uh, sits in uh, the airport in Vancouver, sits in Ottawa, I think it sits in, uh, in Washington, D.C. as well. Um, but the, the metaphor of the Jade Canoe or the Spirit Canoe is that this is a craft, a, a vessel, that is in uh, stormy waters. It's on rough ocean. And the people in the canoe are people who are there not of their own choosing. They're somehow in this boat, in this vessel, uh, even though they don't necessarily know each other, and even though some of them don't like each other, and even though some of them have done bad things to each other in the past. So it's not just full of people who know and like each other, it's full of <clears throat> uh, betrayal and misunderstanding and assumptions and the like. But they're on stormy seas. And the only way they're going to survive, the only way they're going to get to their destination, which they're not completely sure of because it's hard to see land, and they don't have a compass, the only way they're going to get to their destination is by figuring out a way to work together. The metaphor is that our toughest social and environmental challenges in Canada already have solutions. Yeah, the secret of the Spirit Canoe is that there is always room for one more. We can always, in effect, stop and wait for the next person who wants to join because there is no way that we're going to solve our toughest social and environmental challenges on our own with our own organization, with one sector. The only way we're going to solve our tough social and environmental problems is figure out a way to work not only with friends and allies, but also with opponents, indeed enemies, with people that we've betrayed, with people who've betrayed us, people who've hurt us, and with people who are strangers to us. That's the call in order to get the job done. And here we have this iconic image of the spirit canoe. And so we figure out a way to bring more and more people on, and there is always room for one more. Well, I think um, <clears throat> these, these gatherings are always paradoxical because uh, we sink into them. They're almost spiritual in a way. Uh, we have a time to reflect, to be with people in a little bit more relaxed state. But everyone who's here goes back home to uh, a lot of work that they've left behind, perhaps even major deadlines or major crises. And so the real struggle, the real challenge, the real paradox, if you will, is how do you take what happened here and integrate it or introduce it or infuse it back home? It's not, it's not easy. It's easier said than done. And so I think that's our challenge, is really to try and think more carefully about that. And th the, the lesson, the metaphor of the spirit canoe is one, one way to do that. Every one of us, I think, has the ability to create in our organization, no matter how small, in our institution, in our system, a spirit canoe. Not just with the uh, usual suspect, not just with the people who agree with us, like here, but also with the people who disagree with us and uh, bring them in, bring strangers in. And that, I think, is one of the ways in which we can begin to introduce the lessons, the thinking, the inspiration, the tools that have come out of this event back home. 
Well, I, I think imagination, uh, in my view, is more important than policy or strategy, you know, or legislation. Uh, because sometimes we get caught up in the tools or the techniques or the processes or the technology. But unless we know where we're going, those tools and techniques and processes will take us right back to where we started. And surely the point is that where we are now isn't working as well as we want. So we have a different destination. So we are, in effect, we are at A, and we're going to maybe, as opposed to B. We're not 100% sure in what direction we're going. So well, what sustains you with a vision like that? Because most of us consider ourselves to be very practical people. And my God, to set ourselves loose and adrift in an experimental mode for a long time is very awkward, it makes all of us feel a little uncomfortable. And so it's the imagination of what is possible, the kind of world that we can see, that we want to live in, that we can see people that we care deeply about, that we love, want to live in, that we can see the earth, the plant, the air, you know, uh, the water around us. I can imagine that. That's a very critical piece. It's not the only piece. But without that imagination, those tools and techniques will take us right back to B. So, um, the power of the Spirit Canoe is that you have people in there, despite their differences, who have the ability, you know, to project, to imagine, <laughs> safe haven, yeah. a safe port. Uh, I mean, that's, in a sense, a fuel that enables them to overcome whatever has been dividing or alienating them or estranging them in, in the past. So those are not the only things, but those are a couple of things that I think are very important.